So let's go into our static, I mean, our dynamic assessments. So if we do our anterior tilt, which means bringing these two bones, the front of the pelvis bones down and forward, I want you to pay attention to if this causes any discomfort in any SI joints that you have. So when we do this anterior tilt of the pelvis, what's happening is SI joint is going to be compressing. So if you're experiencing any discomfort in the SI joints here during the anterior tilt, chances are this is a compression that you're feeling. If you go the opposite way, posterior tilt your pelvis, feel the sweep out the back of that pelvis suit bowl. If you feel some, some stuff at the back of your SI joint here, this is likely due to decompression. When the pelvis posterior tilts, SI joint pressure decreases. When you anterior tilt, the pressure between those two bones increases. So let's start to make some correlations here. When are you feeling the symptoms? Is it in compression or a decompression? Compression is the anterior tilt. Decompression is the posterior tilt. Now this is not, I don't wanna say this is a hard rule because I think there's a lot of nuance to this. So we're just gonna do the 101, gotta start somewhere. This will open up a discussion. Probably I'll get some shit for this, <laughs> but that's okay. Constructive discussions are good. So which one was it for you? In the sagittal plane movement of your pelvis, is more of your stuff showing up in compression, anterior tilt, or decompression, posterior tilt? Let's move in to the frontal plane. So if you remember our frontal plane pelvis assessments, when you bend one of your knees, you should feel the opposite side of the pelvis hike up, and the opposite side, or sort of the same side, drop down. So we have the teeter-totter sort of level change happening. Go into your two hikes, right and left. And I want you to notice if during these hikes, this causes some discomfort or sensation in your SI joint. And which one is it? Is it on the hike or is it on the drop? So for me, my right side, I feel more of the issue on the drop. And when I hike, it actually feels okay. So what's happening here? So when you hike one side of the pelvis, so if my left side is hiking, that is going to be a compression of the SI joint in the frontal plane, more pressure as the pelvis hikes. And the side that's dropping is decompressing. So interestingly, if you're following my example, I know it's hard to pay attention to you and to me, but I'm gonna use me as an example because I can't feel what you're feeling or pull one of you up out of the screen to use as a demo. When I drop to the right side of my pelvis, I feel discomfort in my right SI joint. This is decompression. So this SI joint does not like to be decompressed, which is going to influence my strategy for how I address it. And just to backtrack a little bit, what is one of the things that most people will say to do for your SI joint? So we need to traction it, we need to decompress it. But what if it's already decompressed? What if you're standing with one side already lower? What if you're standing already in a posterior tilt? That SI joint is already going to be more likely to be decompressed. Should we be tractioning it? Should we be decompressing it? Probably not. Maybe it needs to be shown how to compress and then decompress and get both of those motions available to it. And quite honestly, for some of my clients, when they do an anterior tilt, it's fine. When they do a posterior tilt, that's when they feel the problem. And that's the decompression. So some people, I just want you to think a bit more critically before you start looking at shit to do with your SI joint on YouTube. Really think critically about what it really needs. Let's move into the transverse plane. So a transverse plane, we have our pelvis rotations right and left. So let's block your shoulders from moving. Rotate your pelvis to the right. And rotate your pelvis to the left. 
And I want you to gauge again if one of these directions of rotation are more problematic for your SI joint than another. So for me, when I rotate this direction to the left, bringing my right side forwards, that's when I start to get the issues in my SI joint. When I rotate the other way, things are totally fine. Super happy to go to the right, going to the left, uh, doesn't feel so great. So what's happening here in terms of compression and decompression? When we rotate one side of the pelvis forwards, that side that is forwards is the more compressed SI joint. The side that is back is the more decompressed side. So for me, rotating my right side forwards, this is where I feel the problem. This is compression. So my problems in the transverse plane are compressive. So I have compression in two planes of motion and decompression issues in the other plane of motion. So just to run through me again, just to give you an example, when I anterior tilt, compression, I feel that in my right SI joint. So I have compression in the sagittal plane. When I go into the frontal plane and do my hikes and drops, when I drop on the right side where I have the issues, that's decompression. So I have a decompression issue in the frontal plane. When I rotate, when I bring my right side forwards into a rotation of my whole pelvis to the left, that's when I have my issues, that's compression. So in the transverse plane, my SI joint problem seems to be with compression. So is there one exercise that's going to help me with all of those things? Probably not. I need a little bit of something different for all those different planes of motion. So I hope that you're starting to make some correlations about what's going on with you, and that there's a little bit of nuance to this. Now, if anyone has, has questions about the mechanics of exactly how these compressions are happening, between the two bones of the sacrum and the ilium. Next session, we might go into a little bit more the weeds of that in our part two. But for today, just trust me, and we can talk about the mechanics later. Let's just make a leap of faith here when I say that this is compression, this is decompression. I'm always happy to be challenged on these things too. For those of you who are watching this, who are anatomy people, happy to have a discussion. Okay, so what do we do about this stuff? What we're simply going to do today is explore ways of moving our pelvis in three planes of motion to see if we can get some of the missing movements back to it and restore balance of the pelvis. Now, this might be effective for some of you. This might not feel great for others of you. So if things don't feel great, don't force it. Then I'm going to show you two exercises in which the first one the SI joint is going to be fully compressed in all three planes of motion, and it's going to wake up your glutes and your hamstring. And the second exercise is going to fully decompress the SI joint in three planes of motion, and it's going to feel like a loading of the front of your hip, like a hip flexor stretch. So let's get into it. 